Dollar for dollar, I think this is the best, most traditional dim sum experience in Chinatown. I think that one is like more Chinese right here because like it made for Western. Yeah. This might be the greatest sushi you can get in Chinatown. Chopped cheese a la Dominica. Yo, this is fire. Strawberry cake is fire. Five out of five. I have not had that anywhere else. You gotta try it. What's the hottest card dim sum? How good can omakase be at a Chinese food hall? Where do German tourists eat? And how are the new shops adapting and growing? The answers to these questions and more in this Chinatown Eats Part 12. Now give us a thumbs up if you're excited to see what's happening in the best Chinatown in America. Our first spot is designed to compete with Flushing. It's got omakase to lobster pizzas to all your traditional things. Let's check it out. Chinatown's first food court. Mott Street Eatery. Yes, now is it like the very new and high-end fusion eatery? No, I don't think so. I think they have some very, very affordable and cheap options. We're here with our friend Dave. Is this the first food court you've ever seen in Chinatown? No, this will be the second one, the one on Canal Street. Right, right, right. The one that's the most local, I feel. Mott Street Eatery, brand new food court on Mott Street. Let's go. Mott Street Eatery is open, and, but not 100% of the stalls are filled up with food spots yet. Yo, Andrew, do you think the people in Chinatown are ready for an omakase in the middle of essentially a hood food court. I do think it's a great option to have. I don't know how many people are gonna come here, you know, and take a date out here yet, but maybe perhaps. They have no competition right now. No other place does this. All right, you guys, this is Blue Fin Akami Tuna in the middle of Chinatown. This costed us $24, so obviously not the cheapest eat, but for the quality, it might be. Chinatown omakase. It ain't bad. $8, great. Uh, king salmon on the house. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Let's do it. Come support Domo Sushi. Wild Alaskan king salmon uh, stacked on top of each other. Guys, this may not be cheap, but it's relatively cheap for this level of sushi. We're in Chinatown. This might be the greatest sushi you can get in Chinatown made by a Chinese guy. I'll give that, that piece specifically, a four out of five. This might be a unicorn in this place, man. I don't know. This is a standout. Hey everybody, a question that David and I actually get asked quite often is, when you do so many food videos, how is it that you are able to stay fit? And the reason is because we stick with an exercise routine and that's why I have to give a big shout out to our sponsor today, the FitBot app. It's a workout app on iOS and Android that helps design custom workouts for you based on your goals and available equipment. For example, if you don't even have a gym, you can select that and they will make up workouts for you. If you have a goal to just stay lean or build mass or just burn fat, then the FitBot app can design an easy to follow routine for you. It'll adjust the intensity to progress your workout so that you don't have to think about how much weight to add. I think it's really useful for people who don't know where to start, you know, people who have trouble keeping up with a routine and people who don't have access to a full gym. It has entire workouts that will help you get you super defined with no weights at all. It's informative in explaining workouts, it has a cool user interface, and then the notifications come right on time. So, as you can see, whether you have access to a gym or not, the FitBot app is there to just walk you through all your exercises, tell you how to do them correctly. If you want 25% off, click on that link down below or check out fitbot.me slash fungbros. This place is not open yet, but they got chicken sandwiches, pizzas, they got a lobster right there with the logo. I mean, Yo, that's pretty Dave, interesting. I don't know if you know this, but there's this trend about bringing kind of like the McDonald's or KFC China chicken sandwich style to America, and I think that's what they're gonna try to do. That's wow! Go Anytime you see a new roast meat spot pop up in the Kanto zone, you know, theoretically the standard here should be very high due to the region we're in. Uh, Check it out. Dave, have you ever tried this extra crispy oh. duck? Yes. Yeah. Not here, but yes. Uh, yeah. You think this is going to be better than Wafang? I don't know how much it's going to be. I believe uh, a Sei Ping Fan, which is four choice meat, is at nine fifty, so it's ten bucks. Technically double price. The legendary uh, duck buns from Flushing have made it to Chinatown. Yeah, but they're it's probably two, more expensive, right? Uh, two dollars a bun, wow. so not not too bad. If for a dollar seventy-five, Flushing's like a five out of five. I give it a four. Or treasure rice right here. First of all, I gotta try this duck. Good flavor, a little bit dry. Siu yuk, roast pork. Siu yuk is pretty good. It looked good. I really like the, the whole sauce. Thing hanging. I really like this. Uh, this extra sauce palm. It's very peppery, got a lot of five spice. Andrew, what is the deets 
on the roast meats here at Mott Street Eatery. I need to know. At Mott Street are solid. They're not exceptional. I would say the chashu actually has a lot of flavor. The siyao guy, the soy sauce chicken, and the siu yuk are the top ones. But I will say that the convenience factor, that's really the thing with yeah. food courts, right? Food courts are never meant to like blow you out of the water. They're just meant to be like the best combination of like price, convenience, speed. You know, you don't gotta sit down. Yeah, I mean, there's still a lot of open stalls, so we'll see what other restaurants come here, but the location is very convenient right off Canal Street. This is a ao yao so bun, a kind of like a man, beef just, tongue bun. Just rip that up, man. It's supposed to look like a beef tongue. All right, it's supposed to be sweet too. Never had this bun before. All right, this is a Toysan sweet bun. Ao yao so. It's like the Chinese buffets. They have the um, the sweet bread at the end. Very dense, probably not meant to be eaten on your own, but I think if you eat it with kanji, it could work. Overall, my take on Mott Street Eatery, not even all the stalls are filled up, so I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. Solid option for Chinatown, New York. Oh. I'm glad to see it. Having the stalls here is gonna give a lot of people a chance to have their own restaurant without having to open their own restaurant. Like burger and pizza Dave, over here. I know you were, you were waiting, you're looking, you're waiting for burger and pizza. I'm, I'm intrigued by that restaurant. What's going on guys? Chinatown Cheap Eats 12, and we are documenting a dim sum revolution because uh, during the pandemic, a lot of the old school spots closed down. Now in their place, there's new spots. Some of the new spots are really high end, just serving, you know, a certain type of demographic. But here, this is an elevated experience, Andrew, that's still inexpensive at House of Joy. Bro, House of Joy is the biggest, newest cart dim sum I've ever seen. Now there are some other cart dim sum spots that just opened up but as far as this build out on Pell Street with the gold and the new you know outside and the build out on the inside with the big L L LCDs crazy and it is true Andrew that cart dim sum is typically considered more mid-tier or lower tier dim sum right your most expensive top end dim sum spots probably won't do it off the cart but most people they like dim sum off the cart it's more fun let's check it out Andrew this is a brand new build out that is pretty inexpensive. Look, a small is 350, a medium is 425, a large is 495, extra six bucks. Um, some of the nicer spots like Dim Sum Palace, Andrew, it starts at six. Okay, so here. Look at these chashu bows, they're very with the honey on top. Glazed with honey on top. You can see how it's shimmering and shiny. This is a walnut bun, a hop to see how, see how? Yo, that looks crazy. Look, they made the top look like a walnut. Oh, you gotta get the one that looked like a dove, bro. Yeah. Alright you guys, we are at House of Joy right now. And I have to say, Andrew, there's a lot of items on this table right now. Maybe sans the chashu bao that I've never had before. David, the people really want to know how much each dish costs that we get. Now, let me tell you this. If you get the ones that are designed like a bird, swan, or the dove here, or the one that's designed like a walnut, trust me, those are going to be charged as larges. But that's still pretty fair price. It's only $5. I have a gigantic jalapeno pepper stuffed with shrimp. This looks a little bit more Southeast Asian because it's wrapped in the leaf. And this is going to be a... Uh, I forgot the name in Cantonese they just said, but it's a sticky rice ball with filling inside. Put the little toothpick. Come on, guys. Dim sum is the most intricate meal. Bro, Somebody had to do no, that. No, no, no. This jalapeno pepper is hot as hell right now. I cannot <laughs> believe they're serving this with the seeds inside. Sweet mochi exterior. Yo, this is a good dish. All right, I'm going in on what I believe is a gigantic piece of pork with... Uh, purple sticky rice on top. Wow, David's negotiating. I have the walnut bun. Very sweet, very fluffy. Pretty solid, Andrew. This is a meatball covered in purple sticky rice. What did you think of the walnut flavoring? The walnut flavoring, it's definitely something you would eat maybe more towards the end of the meal because it's very sweet, but I liked it a lot. Animal dim sum. Mine actually has a ton of taro in it. This swan ass tastes hella good. Mmm. Cashew bao, very soft, very fluffy. I've got a gao um, choy gao, which is a gao uh, meaning dumpling. Gao choy being this green thing. All right, let's go in. Wow, look how fluffy that was. All right, you guys, everything was quite affordable in terms of it being an elevated mid-tier dim sum experience. Andrew, um, right now around New York City, there's a ton of high-end dim sum spots opening, whether that's Hulu, 
Dim Sum Palace, Hu Tung, um, and shout out to those spots. But a lot of those, it's really out of reach for a lot of people. Really like the elevated mid-range like House of Joy because it's something affordable but still elevated for the average consumer. All right, dollar for dollar, I think this is the best, most traditional dim sum experience in Chinatown. We're here with the owner, uh, son, father combo at Mop 46 Rookie Man. Tell us about it. Hello, I'm called Jermaine. We have Bozai Fan and we have skewers here. Uh, right here we have the chicken and mushroom. Oh my goodness, look at that. All right, you guys, this is the Bozai Fan. Of course, we're gonna put the sweet soy sauce on top. This is $7. A lot of spots right now in Chinatown, you know, for the boats I found, they're charging something like 14, you know? So this is a pretty good deal. I mean, obviously most of them are probably averages 10 on the high end, 14. $7 for a dish that other places charge $12 for. If that ain't in Chinatown, cheap beef. Tell me what is. As far as the skewers go, these are really cheap as well. This chicken wing is $2. These fish balls are $2, golly. Guys, this is a $7 bow tie fond here on Mod Street. You will not find it any cheaper. In East Village, you can go to a spot and they might charge you $18 or $20 for the same dish. But here, $7 bow tie fond. This is new to Chinatown, in a way. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats Part 12 is HK One Ton Garden. Now, this spot actually was over on Mott Street for many years, but it moved here. But introducing this spot, I have a special friend. Um, this is a local filmmaker, a New York native, OG of Chinatown, Jane Louie. Jane, uh, so Jane, actually, real quick, we're actually working on like a short film together. Yes, yes. In Chinatown, and she yes. knows everything about Chinatown. So, explain this spot. Chow Yuen, famous One Ton Noodle. And I took Sam Mo Hong there for one time, like 30 years ago. Wow, Sam Mo, yeah, the Sam martial Mo artist. The one on Ma Street. Okay. Yeah, he so, like it. <laughs> so w did it move and get replaced by something else? Oh yes, another one ton, another one ton noodle, but this is original. All right guys, here at HK One Ton Garden in classic Canto fashion, they have more than 100 items on the menu, bro. Look at this, this looks like a pamphlet for a dictionary. Um, I have a couple dishes that I just wanted to try. These are not only, these are not necessarily the best things here, but this one is, guys. They would recommend, you have the Aulam one ton mein, which is the beef brisket with one ton and noodles. Guys, this is a classic HK dish. I mean, I can just show you right now that you can look at the brisket and see that it's really super tender. The worst thing about brisket sometimes is that it's not tender enough, guys. But man, you come here, look at that, look. And then you have this sweet and sour chicken, which actually comes separate from the sauce, which is interesting because that kind of reminds me of the sweet and sour chicken um, that's the Chinese Korean style, right? That you actually dip it. So I poured some right here. Takayik, which is the chicken wing right here. Now they're pretty small, but I think they're juicy. Let me try them out. Mm. He actually put the soup in with all the meats and then he poured a little bit of like extra special like soy sauce into it too for that extra flavor. Let me try the one ton real quick. Guys, I got all this for $21. This was about $9.50 and then these two were about $7 or $8 each. Guys, sweet and sour chicken dipped into the sauce. That's actually hella good. The reason why I got this dish is because I saw it on the menu outside with the picture, and I was like, oh, that just looks different. That's just something I don't usually get. All right, guys, I'm here with uh, some patrons of the restaurant, uh, Amelia and Katharina. You guys are coming from Germany, um, but what uh, made you come to HK One Ton Noodle Bar? Um, actually, we were just passing through the street, and we just decided to come here. Okay, what, so, what drew you in? Was it all the pictures of food on the outside? Kind of, yes, definitely. Okay. Like they have a big map on the outside. Um, I get um, some fried um, duck with um, Shanghai noodles and a soup. Yes. How does it compare to the, have you had Chinese food in Germany here? I think that one is like more Chinese right here because like um, in our Chinese food, the food is like more like made for... Westernized. Yes. Okay. 
here I have two more dishes for eight dollars you can get this very soft and succulent pig's feet this is not usually a dish I would order on my own but they recommended it they said that this is what they do really well and I'm sure you know a lot of more like old school or like traditional people they're gonna really like this dish but I'm about to try it and then here you have your beef chow fun aka your gong chong ha dry style and uh, this costs about twelve dollars so this is on the higher end but that's probably because the beef is really high quality here so very soft, cooked well. I don't know if you like pig knuckle. If you don't, don't get it. But if you're okay with it, I would say try it. I can tell why this spot is an OG spot. That right there is a 4.5 out of 5. As you guys know, HK One Ton Garden is an OG. It moved from Mott to Mulberry. It has some low key dishes that are really good. Pig's feet, the beef chow fun. I would say the the beef brisket, one ton noodles, and then actually the sweet and sour chicken that was actually really delicious. So you can see, international crowd, all types of people here. Check it out. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is Sam's Fried Ice Cream. This was started by a guy from Chinatown named Nelson Chow. Shout out to him. And basically what they do is they take a big frozen piece of ice cream, they batter it, they fry it, you can get all these different toppings on it. Nell, have you had fried ice cream before? I have, but not in New York though. In LA at the Japanese restaurants. This is different. Okay, let's find out. Let's go, Sam's Fried Ice Cream. All right, guys, we got our strawberry cheesecake covered in Oreo crust with whipped cream and fruity pebbles on top, all right? And Ooh. this was uh, this was $7. No, you topic. got a sweet tooth. What's going through your mind right now, bro? Hey, you know, oh, hey, hey, after moving to Asia, I've been cutting out the sweets, but, good, you know, have a cheat day today. I'm excited. All right, same fried ice cream. This is better than the Japanese joints because here you get to customize it however way you want it. You get to put the whipped cream, fruity pebbles, they have like honeycombs, Reese's Puffs, whatever. They have a bunch of variety on how you want to make it. Man, let me tell you this. They are providing something that was missing in Manhattan. So, $8, customize your fried ice cream, share it amongst your friends. It's totally worth it. All right, everybody, so we're inside a Ho Yi and it's definitely like kind of a crazy place. This reminds me a lot of China. First sauce, tons of green onion. A little bit of cilantro, garlic of course, with a little bit of sesame paste, the mahjong. And then I'm gonna do a little bit of peanut butter actually. And then a little bit of sacha. This is the sauce that everybody likes, a hot pot, the sacha jang. All right you guys, the food has arrived here at Ho Yi. And they have some really unique like fusion broths. For example here, this one is a garlic butter broth. And this one is a beef butter. So it's not necessarily tied to any sort of province. I'd say it's almost maybe like a Taiwanese style or a general Chinese style. But aren't right, you guys, uh, one of the things I've been really looking forward to in this hot pot is this ramen right here. I know um, some people, they don't like to use like, you know, cheap things to like fill up their stomach, but I don't care. All right, you guys, Ho Yi Hot Pot, Chinatown Cheap Eat, $37.95, and unlimited drinks, unlimited ice cream, unlimited meats veggies, mushrooms. Bro, what I love is that it's actually really fun. So this is not the fanciest hot pot. It might not even be the cheapest. In fact, Andrew, it might be the least fanciest hot pot. I mean, look, you're eating in a shed, okay? And I'm, we're eating next to a graffiti wall. And this is legit, we're outside on the street right now. So it's definitely an interesting experience. It really feels like that you're out on the streets of like China, like somewhere in, maybe on the outer skirts of Beijing, right? Shanghai yeah. downtown or like Beijing. I think it's actually really, really fun. So definitely, Come check out Ho Yi Hot Pot, guys. Is it gonna be, you know, the best hot pot you ever had in your life? No. But is it gonna be a really fun experience that is totally worth 40 bucks? Yes. Hey, but actually the broth tastes really good. They use a lot of butter, so it's just really fun to eat. All right, so my next spot here on Chinatown Cheap Eats is a spot that I have never been to. I never thought about going to. I never even seen it on Yelp. I'm outside a food station right here on Canal and Center Street. Let's go check it out. All right, so check this out, guys. We're here. This is kind of like your Chinese buffet. Now, it's interesting because it's very, very hard to find a Chinese buffet anywhere in New York, but this is one of those concepts where they have the hot food here, and I, I like it. It's a, it's very much like one of those buffets because it has a few Western dishes, like 
the fish right here. It has like your shrimp here. You have your chicken wings. You also have your batsika, you know, ginger scallion chicken. You have your fried shrimps right there. Here you have your roast pork. It really does look like one of those uh, Fujinese Chinese buffets that I grew up eating at. All right, guys, we're here at New Cameron Bakery over on Canal Street, another spot that's super low key, Chinatown adjacent, more in the very busy area right next to the train station. Um, low key uh, Cantonese bakery ran by a guy who's Chinese Malaysian. Here, I wanted to get a couple things that you don't find very often. Here, I have the black sesame roll. This is your classic roll cake, except all with black sesame. I believe in Cantonese, it is called Huk Ki Mao. Strawberry cake, okay? Look how vibrant this looks. This looks fire. And then here, we just have a Western style cake, but they did a really good job of decorating each slice with the watermelon design, all right? Man, I'm telling you, my goal here is to find and explore the nooks and crannies of Chinatown and adjacent areas even if it's not on Yelp, even if people don't talk about it. Whoa, yo, this is fire. The strawberry cake is fire, five out of five. I'm gonna go in on this. American cake with the watermelon on top. The number one thing that you gotta get at Cam New Cameron Bakery on Canal Street is the strawberry cake. I have not had that anywhere else. You gotta try it. We are looking at Peking Duck Pizza from Burger Pizza Quan. These are chefs uh, formerly from the Marriott in Times Square. It doesn't look like much, but I like it. Honestly, you can tell this tastes like a hotel flatbread. There is some hoisin, there is marinara, but it's like a sweet, almost like Filipino Jollibee joy, uh, Jollibee chicken joy type ketchup. So ultimately, these flavor profiles, surprisingly, they work. And those are chicken tenders in the burger. Yes, sir. Hey. Okay. They don't have it in Chinatown. You can't get this in Chinatown. We got it now. All right, guys, I'm pouring the house sauce on. And then for me, I like a little bit of ranch. So you know me, I got to pour some ranch on. We are bringing the Marriott Times Square menu to Chinatown with their own twist. This is something Chinatown has never seen, ever. And Burger Kwan is a Chinatown cheap eats must try. You have never seen something like this in Chinatown before. Chinatown is changing but maybe also for the better. All right guys, here at Zunping Cafe, it's named after a famous guy in China. This is the Sago yogurt. Sweet, yogurty, kind of tastes like Beijing style, has a little pizza Sago in it. This would be really great to eat after like a hot pot or like a hot meal. I've never had this in Chinatown. I've had yogurt in Chinatown. I've had Sago desserts in Chinatown. I have never had a Sago yogurt dessert. Yo, Steve, give us a quote, man. Automatic cooks for you. You said it's AI, it's gonna cook the food for you? Guys, this machine behind me, I'm not sure if we have time to tell you how it works, but it washes it, 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 it can cook your bok choy, and then it'll stir fry it. All right, you guys, we are here with the AI bok choy. I'm fascinated to try this. Like we said, nobody's touched it. It ain't bad. I'm, I just bought this hat for $3. So think about it, guys. You can buy a new hat and eat lunch for like $10 in Chinatown. <laughs> it's crazy. Hey, David, how's this hat look? All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is not necessarily Chinese, but it is definitely within the zone. And this is Don Juan Grocery on Forsyth and Broome. They have a Dominican hot food section, and I feel like they definitely put their own cultural influence into the sandwiches. So, Andrew, it's not just some, like, regular bodega sandwiches. Legitimate Dominican food up until they sell out, usually around 4 or 5 p.m. So, I got a little bit of time. Let's go get some pernil. All right, guys, so the good people at Don Juan said I could film myself getting some food. I'm going to show you guys what I get. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing, man? Hey, do you have any more chicken stew left? No, we have some pepper steak, which is really good. We got some roast pork. Okay. And um. We got a piece of baked chicken. Oh my goodness, yo! Could I, uh, could I get like a just one small thing of and with the black beans and then the two meats, like a little bit of both? Definitely. You can charge me for whatever. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Enjoy, man. You guys, Cheap Chinatown Eats. This is the first time we've had Dominican food on there. This is straight from the cafeteria at Don Juan Bodega. Hey, we only went there because I think it's totally arguable that that is in Chinatown. You could call it LES, but you know, whichever way you call it, it's not wrong. Here I have the Dominican chopped cheese. David, here you have pepper steak, you have pernil, and you have chicken gravy on top of some uh, black beans and rice. That was $6, this was also $6. Well, even a lot of Dominican bodegas, they don't carry Dominican food because they're trying to cater to the population, but there is enough Dominican uh, in that building over there. Wow. Don Juan Grocery. 
Their pernil is good. Wow. Bro, this chopped cheese is delicious. It definitely, I can definitely taste the Spanish side to it. So shout out to them for making it Dominican style. Chopped cheese a la Dominica. Don Juan Grocery, you can get this, you can get Dominican hot food, you can get cut for like $15, $20 right next to them called Moran Barbershop. Guys, Dominican spots nearby Chinatown. All right, so our next spot on Cheap Chinatown Eats is a spot that we always come to because they're always doing new collabs and it's almost like a, like a sneaker store slash dessert store, all right? So here at Milk and Cream, they actually just did a Hot Ones with First We Feast collabo. All right, so you have the chicken nuggets here, but they're actually um, fully vanilla ice cream with them, some little crispy chips on the top. And then here you have the spicy ones, which essentially it's gonna be like spicy Cheeto dust on top of it. And it's crazy how much they made it look like chicken nuggets right here. And they even give you this honey sauce right here to dip your nuggets in. So, man, I just gotta go and try it because this is so inventive. Okay, and then can I get some? Okay, so it's hard, kinda cold. First of all, even the non-spicy nuggets are kind of spicy. I, this is gonna be spicy, I can tell. Got a little saltiness, spiciness in with the vanilla ice cream. Wow. Yo, that is something I never had before. Guys, you've got to check out Milk and Cream. They are doing some crazy things with dessert. Yeah, that one. <laughs> nah, this is <laughs> All right, you guys, we are on Pell and Bowery. Come get the Hong Kong Kai Dan, uh, Dan Zai. And uh, I have a strawberry, I got peanut butter, I got condensed milk, I got honey lemon, I got chocolate, I got coconut condensed milk. You have all the flavors. Yes, you can ask for this, guys. Just make sure you tip. Which one's that? Ooh, that was coconut honey. Going in for strawberry right now. Tastes like a peanut butter jelly sandwich. This is a Chinatown cheap eat. This whole thing was only $5. Honestly, guys, the flavors do make it better. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a four out of five. Very solid. I was waiting for the game to mature and evolve. Glad to see it. Just when you thought dim sum was leaving Chinatown, there is a dim sum resurgence. We have just showed you in this video uh, multiple spots that have just opened and Dim Sum Palace is another one. This is a chain from Midtown. It is a little bit more on the expensive end, nicer end. It's gonna feel exactly like a new Hong Kong build out in there. But let me tell you this, this Dim Sum is no joke. And by the way, you can get it at all times of the day. All right, you guys, they do have some unique dishes here. I'm gonna go ahead and get the Dim Sum platter. It allows you to get one of every one. This is a green tea ball. You guys, I've never seen this before in my life. I'm just gonna try it for you right now. Coconut and red bean with sesame. And, and I got the parsley churn fun. I actually saw a worker eating this on a worker's table on the way in and it really motivated me to get it. Good for breakfast. Hey guys, we have your dumpling platter here. There's one, two, three, four types of dumplings. These are chicken siumai, these are hakaos, these are chicken dumplings, and then these are your gaochoi. Okay, these are your gaochoi dumplings. So this platter was $15. That's a little bit on the higher side, but if you're somebody who wants to try all the different dumplings and you guys don't know what to order, then definitely try this. Let me tell you this, Dim Sum Palace is very, very high quality. Chicken siumai here, which is a new thing because you know, more people are leaning towards chicken. And then here I have my shrimp and steamed Fu. You guys, chicken dumplings, it's the new wave. Do you think that the chicken dumpling can become more popular than the pork dumpling eventually? When it comes to chicken versus pork, there will be nothing that can re replace pork. I think that you can actually make a vegan version of chicken easier than you can make a vegan version of pork. The chicken dumpling will advance, it will expand because of people's like religion, their uh, health concerns and everything like that. And honestly, chicken dumplings, they're getting pretty good now. Right here, the little tofu with the hakao filling on the inside. This is something that uh, probably a lot of like ABCs will not really order, but it does kind of look like a fancy dish. Mm. At least for $7.95, we got the Pai Gwet Chang Fun. It is steamed pork ribs with a little black bean sauce, topped with a little bit of soy sauce, laying on a bed of vertically placed Chang Fun, okay, which is super soft. It is hot. It's, it's mad fresh right now, hold up. 
No recommendation at Dim Sum Palace. This is a deep cut dish. Not everybody's gonna know about it. It might be kind of a new one, but definitely go for it. Mm. All right, you guys, we're in front of Harper's Bread House, 271 Grand Street. And this is probably the unofficial source of a lot of Grand Street Park ballers snacks yeah i would say it's similar to a lot of the other bakeries on grand street but it doesn't have as much hot food they more specialize in onigiris and sandwiches but of course it is right across from the park so if you need a drink they got some gatorade no. they all have all different types of tarts they do have a variety of drinks here everything is under three dollars let's check it out all right so these you got the spicy smoked salmon but this is cooked it is not raw uh you yoga salmon you all right, you guys, so I just got a cocktail cream bun. I just got the ham and scallion. Of course, it's a little bit later in the day, so a lot of stuff is sold out right now. But you can tell we're in proximity to the park because they do sell Gatorades. All right, Andrew, we've arrived outside of Harper's. I got the ham and scallion. I like to get this before I hoop it in the morning. Wow. All right, David, I have the classic creamy booty bun. Um, as you can see, split down the middle. Mmm. That one's underrated. The sweet cream, really no. good. Jerry. Have you had this cake before? Well, try it, try it. Give us, let us know your opinion, man. We out here. It's creamy and uh, like smell like tastes milky too. Okay. Do you mess with this this bakery? Yeah, yeah, I come here a lot. Okay. How do you think it compares to other bakeries? Like, I mean, it's next to Grand Street, right? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's right next to Grand, and then it's closer. Like everyone hungry, so you can just come here to buy like get some cake. Hey, and man, stuff. you're hearing it straight from the source, Harper's Bakehouse. Andrew, how's that onigiri? Let's try it. Mmm. This is actually smoked salmon in the, on the inside. But if I had a little bit of soy sauce, a little wasabi, this would be hidden. All right, you guys, I believe we finally woke up early enough to film Chinatown Cheap Eats to secure the ever elusive thing that's steamed chicken, mushroom, egg, broccoli, over rice, sweet soy sauce. Let's go. Today, we succeed. What? It's sold out! Dude! Ah! I told you, man, no way. you can never get it, bro. You can just. Dude, I think that lady in the beginning didn't know what she was talking about. How did it sell out in an hour? All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is not a Chinese spot, but it is partially Chinese owned. This is Granddaddy Cafe here on Grand Street. And it's not just any regular coffee cafe. It is actually doing a lot of Asian drinks right now. Here's a Hoji Cha Latte, which is very trendy. This is a Japanese style latte right here. And then this, of course, is your matcha latte. This is only about $3.50 to $4 each, which is way cheaper than almost any other you know fancier part of town so shout out to that guys i gotta try the hoji cha i'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering how this tastes it's very much like a milky roasted barley guys they actually have a black sesame latte but they ran out today because it just sold out guys japanese style ice latte very good very smooth man here's the matcha very smooth again you know what i like about granddaddy it's right in the middle of still what a lot of people call like the exterior of Chinatown and it's just offering something to the community that is kind of hard to find right there's only a Starbucks like a few blocks away it's kind of outside of the zone but when it comes to that kind of cafe culture that's still showing some reverence to the Asian roots of this neighborhood granddad is doing a good job so that's it part 12 Will there be a part 13? You know, I don't really know yet. The past year and a half has been crazy for a lot of people and especially small business owners. I mean, even several of the spots that we showed in part one, two, and three have long shut down. So it just goes to show you that running a business is a lot more than just serving tasty food. And remember, it is important that we not only try to preserve certain aspects of culture, but we also try to push our community to improve and do better. I mean, things don't have to stay the same to stay traditional, you know, to maintain culture. This is a living and breathing community of immigrants who mostly share the same goal of wanting to live a better life. Despite what you might think, what we're trying to say in these videos, being Chinese in America is not defined by cheap, delicious food. Um, but you know, we just thank everybody who has bumped into us on the streets and told us that this series has impacted them or even better yet, their business. We can all do our part. So until next time, we out. Peace.